And um, I, I was going back over it and, you know, I'm just trying to really, really follow the spirit of the living God. All right. Now, we said last week, uh, excuse me, actually a couple of weeks ago, we, I felt like God was dealing with me about living a, what we call the favorite life, the favorite life. And we looked at several scriptures and, and I told you I got a word from God about it. And then, then I heard some other men, men of God talking about it. And then all of a sudden, I mean, I started attracting these books and sermons and stuff about being favored by God. And it is a powerful thing. And really all it is is how much God loves us and how much God makes available for his children. Just like you, what you do for your children. You don't do for everybody in the neighborhood, but you do for your children. You know, they may get a little something left over, but your kids get the pick of the litter. Well, that's the way Father God is. And I believe that he's established... Um, well, we, we read some things that said he's already planned out our life. He already knows. See, he knew what you would need today. He knew that thousands of years ago. That's how much of a planner he is. And he made provision for it, by the way. And so we just have to find out what he said. But I want you to go to uh, the 11th verse again. And we'll, we'll look at this because I'm, I'm so excited about this year, I don't know what to do. And, and the more I, I look into it, the more I read the scriptures, it's just, I, I'm so, man, y'all going to have to, I don't know what y'all going to do with me this year. I just don't know. <laughs> Verse 11 says this, you crown the year with your what? Yes. Your goodness. Or another, another word for that is favor. And your paths drip with abundance. Now, I told you that uh, David had, wrote this, had written this, he wrote this, and it was a, during a time of celebration, he was letting people know how good God was, that he forgave sin, that he provided provision, that he provided protection, that he was just overall a good God. And he said, your whole year is crowned with goodness. And so I've embraced that, I've been meditating that, I've been speaking that, I've been, I've been feeding on that, that this year, this year, 2013, for Ken Friendly, I can't speak for you, but for Ken Friendly, this is going to be the most outrageous, obnoxiously good year I've ever had in my life. I am intentional about it. I'm putting pressure on it every day. It's on the, it's on my my vision board. It's on my it's on my vision pad. It's on my uh, my iPhone. It's on everywhere. I am intentionally on purpose determining that this year will be unlike any other year for me. Now I don't know about you and for my family too, because you know I'm in charge. But but I've already determined that I've had. I already set some things in motion. I'm already seeing some return on it already. It, it doesn't escape my, my, my consciousness. No matter what goes on, I still have my challenges and troubles and problems and all of that. But it ain't not, it, I will not be denied. I said, I will not be denied. This is my year, my year. And I've been having a good year, but this one's going to be unlike anything I've ever seen because I've tapped into and understand that God has crowned my year. He has crowned it with goodness. So that's already established. God has already set on ready. He knew what I would need before I knew what I needed. And he made provision for it. And he's not playing one bad day, not one down day, not one depressed day, not one day of lack. My cup runs over whether I even know I got a cup or not. God has made my cup. My cup is running over. I just got to get under the spout where his glory is coming out and let my cup run over. And that's a great segue into what I want to talk about. Because in this verse, it tells God's part, but it also tells me how I tap into it. So, so I want to caution you today. I want to caution you right now because you may be uncomfortable with what I talk about if you just feel like, well, you know, nothing good ever happens to me. You know, I, I just hope something. I hope, I hope, well, this is 13. Let's see, this is 13 maybe. I just hope something can flip this year for me. Now, you might be a little comfortable up front, but by the time we're done, you're going to know how to flip it yourself. Yeah, the only thing God is waiting on is you. He's not, you know, he, God, we're not waiting on him. God is already moving. We just need to move with him. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go, let's look at the second half of this. And it says, um, let's read it again. You're, you crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. His what? So, if his path is dripping, he's already crowned my year, and his path it drips. That's a man, that means manifestation. Right. Stuff in action. How do I get dripped on? 
I got to get on the path. That's the requirement right there. That's the condition right there. And so I want to talk about that path some more today. Because it's, and, and then I encourage you, all you students of the Bible, that would be everybody, to get your concordance. That would be how, uh, you know, the Bible, the end of the Bible, other side of the Bible. And look up all the words you can find on path. You would be amazed of what God talks about with paths. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of things today. But take this. I'm just setting the table. You decide what, what you're going to eat and how many leftovers you're going to eat and how, long, how many days you're going to eat it. So, but path. Now, here's what path means. Path means a way or direction. Path means a course for a purpose. A path. A path is, is something I intentionally do to get to a certain destination. That's what a path is. And Paul talks about it. He said, I have finished my course. You can substitute course with path. You know, the Bible said, God, he, he, he leads me down the path of righteousness for his sake. So God is really into paths. Now I need to know how to, I need to make sure that I get on this path and stay on this path because everything that I need is on that path. But path, path is a way of, 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 of action. It's a way of operating. Now, the King James, uh, uh, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added, right? Well, kingdom of God is a system. It's God's system. It's God's government. And so when he says seek first the kingdom, he's talking about how God does things. How God does things. You understand? So I need to find out how God does things and, and do them the way he does them. Right. There's a way that seems right to a man path, right. but the end thereof is what? Death or destruction. So I need to find out what, what God's way is. The Bible said all of God's ways are peace. If you ever want to realize, find out just what I read without reading the Bible, if you're in God's way, check your peace. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have peace about something, there's something wrong. So that's just a little something. I won't charge you for that. Okay, so, so God, listen, God has ordained paths that we should walk in to receive everything that's on, that's dripping. I'll put it that way. That's dripping. Now, go with me, please, to Psalm 17. Good gracious. Now, did you come to learn something today? Okay. Yeah, we didn't come to, to just shake a leg. We came to, we came to learn something. And I'm so glad I get to listen to this all the time. Now, I do, I want to encourage you, uh, this, this, this two more cups, two more slots open. See, a lot of times people feel like, well, I've been married a long time, I know everything. No, you don't. You're probably the very one need to be in there. If you're thinking like that, you can't figure that woman out in 30, 40 years. You, need, you, can't, you can't figure that cat out, that dude, no, he changed every seven months, you know that. And so you... <laughs> It's the truth. It's the truth. And and see, see, it's amazing how I just seen I should have said all this before I get done on the tape. But it's amazing how people they say, I know this. No, no, you you don't feel like we're on your job. You go to all those seminars and all those workshops and you're trying to get you're trying to get an edge. You're trying to get the edge so you can get promoted. You need to get the edge in your marriage and watch God promote you. Yeah, God loves it when you, because marriage is what? Honorable. It's one of God's major things. There's nobody, God instituted marriage. God is in charge of marriage. And when it's done right, he gets the glory. So I encourage everybody. We went through the thing. We, we went through the thing. We went through it. And I, I mean, God, after the first session, we was like, oh, Jesus. We got some work to do. And we worked it. And we're li I mean, we were living a dream before then, but not, we haven't had an argument in two years. Yeah. Two years. It, and it, it was after that. I'm not saying that's going to happen to you. <laughs> because, but but it, it can, if you take some tools, you, you, just, you, just get, you got the right tools. Some of y'all still using that butter knife. You need, you, you, you need to get, retire that butter knife and go get a real screwdriver. <laughs> How many of y'all used to use a butter knife for everything? Right? Where that butter knife at, mama? <laughs> yeah, you, you, try, you got a butter knife, and you got, it's a filler, it needs a filler, but you got that butter knife, and you just add, you just scrub down that thing and make a little point on that. But no, okay, let me quit playing. 
but your marriage is the most powerful thing you got. Listen, if you can get that straight and get that in order, the rest of your life is piece of cake. Piece of cake. It's powerful. Now, why do you think? Why do you think the devil? Why do you think the devil? Why do you think the devil busts up so many of them? He don't want you to know this. And I thought about it a minute ago when I heard you say, "Y'all gonna this is my preaching time." But you, I heard you say, "Yeah, you know, okay, yeah, two hours away times." I'm like, "Oh Lord, don't tell them that." Oh Lord, they're gonna say, "Oh, you mean I got to do some work?" <laughs> then I thought about it. You need to go to work. That's been the problem. We want everything easy. We just want to pray, Lord, they didn't fix my marriage. It don't work like that. It does not work like that. Well, he no, no he needs work, and you need work. Okay, now can I get back to my message? <laughs> I just want y'all, that's why we do these things. That's why we do them. And, and it's an investment. It's amazing. You sit and play a video game for two, three hours a, a, a week? <laughs> a day, okay, a day. Somebody said a day. Yeah, I mean, think about what you're doing, you, what you sit down and watch, you watch CNN, the same thing over and over. You can, all right, that's all I'm going to say about it. No, I encourage you to go. It, it will be worth your investment, and uh, you know, don't let, don't get talked out of it. Okay, now did you find Psalm 17? Yes, sir. Okay, now back to. Now here's a, this is the Psalm that David uh, wrote or prayer, pray, pray, and, and he was being persecuted. Saul were probably after him. And listen to this now, because we're getting ready to get into some some good stuff. Uh, verse one: Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. <laughs> he said, God, everybody walk out, but if your presence here, I know I'm straight. He said, let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. Tell me just in dreams. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have purpose that my mouth. Uh-oh. I have purpose that my mouth shall not transgress. Hold on to that. Verse 4. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the what? Yes. From the what? Yes. Now, we read earlier that God's path is dripping with abundance. Right. Okay, now let's finish this. I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Oh. So, God has paths, but guess what? The destroyer has some paths. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the destroyer has paths. God has paths. That's why I said we need to make sure we, 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 we find God's path and stay on those paths because there's some other paths out there we're being enticed to. We talked about that a little bit last week. Watch this. Uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip. Okay. The destroyer has passed. Who's the destroyer? Yeah, the devil, Satan, demon, the destroyer. Now, how do you stay from the paths of the destroyer? Mumbo, jumbo, gumbo. Okay, good. David said, verse 4, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Now, that is so important. Now, this really ministered to me because he's saying, see, this path is out there. Sometimes there's a blurry line between the destroyer's path and God's path. But he said, what's kept me from the destroyer's path was your word, was the word of God. Now, I want to talk about that because I am, I am, I, I, I'm sold, I'm so sold on, on the Bible. But he says, what keeps you on path and off the path of the destroyer is this word. Same thing Jesus said. Jesus in John chapter 8, he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciple. But then he said this, then you will know the truth and then the truth will do what? It will make you free, and if I stay with the truth, it will keep me free. And I will not venture over into the path of the destroyer. And so, one of the things we must do, if, if we're going to have a spectacular, 
spectacular year and then, then build on it from this year. The word of God had to be a priority. It had to be a priority. There's no other way to enjoy God's abundance of grace and love if the word of God is not a priority. It, it talks to me. Jesus, Paul, uh, David said, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The reason some people say they can't help it is because well, there's no, there's no strength from the word. We say he's our living bread. Well, see, if you don't eat for a while, you're weak. You don't have strength. And so as we feed on the word of life and the bread of life, there's strength that we sin when it comes. We're like, you got to be out of your mind. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might when I stay on this word. And so David said, no, 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 no. I, I avoid the path of the destroyer because of your word. So we got to stay on the word. Saints, you got you to gotta have a relationship with the word. You can't just come to church and listen to the word. You got to take this word and you got to take the word off the page, get it down in your heart, have a relationship with the word until it becomes one with you, until you start giving birth, having, start, having the word babies. And you start, you know, you're talking to somebody, next thing you know, you know, you know, the Lord said this to me. See, that's a word baby. You just had a revelation, birth a revelation. But not only that, but see, you can read the word, but then as you read and study and spend time with the word God will give you a word and that word is for you and God said this is what I'm going to do in your life and, but that only comes from the word we were um, last week I had a board meeting with an uh, organization I'm with and we meet every February in California somewhere we were in, in Vegas because it's a lot cheaper to have meetings there and we aren't gambling, so, but we took all their rooms and uh, ate all the food. You know, it's cheap. Golly, it's really cheap, very economical. Anyway, but, but my pastor, my pastor is in charge of it. Now, now they're celebrating 60 years of marriage next month. So we're going back down there and going to have a big party. Si married 60 years, not 60 years old. They've been married 60 years. He's 81, she's 79. Been in ministry almost 60 years. You know, and they still, they act like little kids still. There, there are natural examples of what marriage and family should be like. That's what we model ourselves after. Find somebody that's working it and model. And that's a lot of questions. That's, that's, they're our model. Now, I say that to say this. Because when you talk to them, you know what they say? Keep doing what you know to do. He said, yeah, he said, listen, don't ever get, he said, don't ever, you want to marry like this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to be happy like this? Oh, you want to live strong, long and strong? Uh, 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 uh. He said, okay. The word of God's got to be a priority in your life. You want to prosper? Yeah. Got to stay in the word. You want to stay healthy? Yeah. Got to make, got to make the word a priority. Just like Jesus said, continue in it. Don't start and stop. Don't start and stop. Don't take a furlough off on the word. Don't get lazy with the word. Don't get somebody else. Don't get somebody else to do the word for you. See, some of y'all, some of y'all come, you know, pastor, what pastor say? But get what pastor say. What does the Bible say? I mean, don't get me wrong. If I'm saying what the Bible say, you can quote me. But other than that, I ain't got nothing to say. But 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 don't don't substitute. There's no substitute. See, I, I get strong on this because this is how you do it. This is this has been the I was telling the folks to pray yesterday. Before we had anything, we didn't even have a anything. We had that word and we had prayer. And we said, okay, if this is because this same man told me this back in 1980. When I was a young man. I'm still a young man. Good looking too. Okay, see, I'm happy with me, all right? I, I, I'm happy with me, all right? I'm, I'm going to talk about me every time. Don't you talk about you? But listen, he told me this 1980. My wife said, yeah, I remember. We're in Narangia Lake, 14830, Narangia Lake Boulevard, 31508. 33158. And, 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 and he said, I'll never forget it. He said, if you will take God at his word... God will take you places you never thought you could go. And it's been 30 years now. That word is so important. And I'm saying that now, and I'm staying with it because I want to encourage this year, you know, you know, especially, especially you older saints. And see, some of y'all, I'm about to say some stuff. Y'all heard me preach this. You've been here. You've heard it. You heard it. And sometimes we, we, we get so familiar with the word that we think we, we're doing it because we know it. 
But this word, you need to sit down with this word. Just you and the word and the Holy Spirit and let him talk, talk to me. Show me this. Show me this. Make me under, make this mean something to me. The word has to be a priority now. There's so many distractions, so many things you, other things you can do. But make sure, time, make sure you take time for the word. Why? So I can stay on the path. Because there's a destroyer out there ready to take you out. And he'll take you out while, while you got the Bible in the next room. You listening to me? He don't care if you go to church. He just doesn't want that word inside you. He don't care. He don't care if you preach. He just don't, like I was telling this morning. You know, I, 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 I study to preach and I study to live. So I got to study twice. If, you know, I can get something to come in here and talk to y'all about, but I need something for my life. I need a word for Ken Friendly, then I need one for the Friendlies. You understand? So this is my friend. I don't ever, I'm never without the word. I thank God for technology. I, got, I was on the plane, we were on the plane yesterday. I got, man, I got about 30 books, about 30 books, about 15 Bibles on this thing. I ain't never without the word. I just hate it when they say, okay, all electronic devices need to call off right now. A couple of times I like, I ain't turning it off. I ain't turning it off. I, I, got you. I know that's wrong. I was in rebellion. I had to repent. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't want you plane to go down because my rebellion. But I know it doesn't affect anything because the guy told me. But anyway. Okay. Did I make my point? Why did David, how did David stay on, off the path of the destroyer? Okay, so watch this. To become deception proof, I need to remain in God's word. Right? Sir. Okay, now. Now, go over. Leave something in Psalms. We're going to come back. But I want to show you one of those paths. One of the paths that God has laid up for the saints. Go to Proverbs 18 and, and hold something in Psalms. We're going to come right back. Thank you, Lord. This is the path. Everybody in here, I don't, whatever your education level is, your, if you're retired, if you're a homemaker, if you're just, just leaving home, if, if you're going back home, if you're single, married, if you're single again, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is for everybody. Now, can I just say one thing? I hate the devil. I'm not going to, I got into some things this morning I'm not going to get into because I want to finish this lesson. If I have time, um, if I have some change, I'll go ahead and get into it. But Now, I want you to listen carefully now. Okay? I want you to listen like you never heard this before. Proverbs 18. Before I, before I even read, let me put this statement out there and get your mind, try to wrap your mind around it. Many people think that God has the final say-so in their affairs and in their life. And that is not the case. Well, he's God, right? Yeah, he's God. But he sets some things in motion. God does not have the final say-so in your life. What, here's what I mean. Whatever happens to, in your life, it's not because God Well, that's not true. He does permit it. It's not because it's God's will. Well, this happened. It must be God's will. You know the Bible says everything worked together for good. That is a cop out. Okay. Now, have your attention? Let's read this verse. Verse 21. And I know that, you know, the religious, that might be a tradition. I understand. Verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it, whatever you say the most, that's what you're going to eat. Now notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say that death and life is in the power of God. Did it? It did not say that death and life is in the power of the devil. Did it? He said death and life is in the power of your mouth. Your mouth. Your mouth. Your mouth. Your mouth. Your tongue, your mouth. Death and life is, is God made it so that, that the responsibility 
for growth and production and, and things that, that lead to life are on me, but also that I set myself up for failure and destruction by the words of my mouth. It's my responsibility. So I can't say that I can't say that everything that's happening in my life, that, that God is just letting it happen, and He's gonna let it happen. I'll show you that right down in about 20 minutes. He'll let it happen. If you let it happen, he'll let it happen. Because he's giving you something that you can do something about. And the reason I think, I, I talk to him about it when, my, when I get to heaven. But one of the reasons I think he did that because see, everybody can talk. You don't have to be smart to talk. But if you can alter what comes out of your mouth. See, some people are killing their relationship. Killing their marriage. Killing the dreams of their children. Killing the initiative of, 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 of other people. Just killing them. Speaking death to their destiny. Death to their bodies. This whole thing. Ah, well, you know, they say when you start getting about 40, you, know, you, know, you start getting a little stuff not working here. Y'all, you better shut up. You better change that talk. Because you, you're speaking death to your genes and your chromosomes and them cells and them arteries. You're speaking death. Well, hey, you know, you know, mama, mama got this right around 45. And you know, no, 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 Maybe mama was eating all that, you know, fat back. <laughs> but but here's the thing. You, isn't this amazing? What comes out of your mouth affects your life. That's the thing, my son's in him. That's the thing, and I thank God we didn't have him, you know, when we, when we first got married. He didn't come to 10 years later. By then, we had this thing working. And we, one of the first things we learned was, you can't just say anything. That's the things he never heard us say. He never heard us say, we can't do that. He never heard us say we can't afford that. Never. Why? Well, one reason. <laughs> I never forget this. I remember it like it was yesterday, though. I remember it like it was yesterday. But I may not. I'll bring it up. Maybe I'll bring it up. Make up. But how can I say that I can't afford something when all of my needs are met according to his riches and glory? It's not about how much money I'm worth. I'm worth Philippians 4.13. 4.19. What is it? 19 or 13? 19. Yeah. I'm worth Philippians 4.19. That's what I'm worth. Well, how much you worth? How much you worth? I'm worth Philippians 4.19. Don't insult me saying I'm worth a million. That's an insult. I'm worth with the kingdom of God. I'm worth everything Jesus got. That's what I'm worth. And so he was saying, he, I, he said, he said well, Daddy, I one time he heard me confessing Psalm 112. You know, the Bible says Psalm 112, wealth and riches shall be in your house. I was saying that, been saying that for 20, 30 years. Well, he heard me saying it one day, and he asked me for something. I said, well, no, not right now. He said, well, I thought we were wealthy. <laughs> I said, we are. He said, well, go on, get the thing in. <laughs> no, no, he said, he said, well, pull out that card. He, he, he equated wealth with that card, you know. He said, that card, and money come out. <laughs> I said, not right now. I never would say we can't. I don't even say that. Yeah. that I, I erase that out of my vocabulary reading Napoleon Hill. Yeah. I don't ever say that. I will not speak death to my ability. Yeah. I will not speak death to my destiny. Just because I can't see it don't mean it's not happening right now. Yeah. And so God said, I'm giving you, see that's the path, y'all. That's the path. That's a path. One of the paths God gives us is you got to say what God says. You got you to speak life out of your life. But what the devil is doing, you kill it. You speak death to... You, what was that going over here? Yeah. You speak, you speak death to cancer in your body. Speak death to the devil trying to separate your marriage. Speak death to folks messing with you on your job. Speak death to life. Speak death to that corn on your foot. Speak death to that bubble in your ear. Okay. You better say something. You got something to say. You don't put up with stuff. Man, I can simply tell you, uh, you know, I can simply tell you story after story. No, today does not mean no always. I declare every day, every delay is working in my favor right now. Hey, 
Hey! Well, I'm about to get happy. You know they say they get happy in the old church. They say he got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm about to get happy. No, 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 no. So, so you may get a report from the doctor, but you say, okay, doc, that's your report. Thank you. Well, thank you, yeah. Well, I got a second. I got another opinion. I got another report, too. So, no, no disrespect, but I got another report. And see, see, it determ what determines where you go is who report you believe. You got to decide. Either you're going to give your own report or you're going to take somebody else's report. That's why you don't sweat what folks say about you. Listen, they don't know you. They, don't, they haven't seen what, If they saw what God saw about you, they would never say what they say about you. Listen, if you saw what God said about you, it'd be hard for you to go to sleep at night. You say, God, I must be somebody. Golly, I'm somebody. You, be in, you get a four-leaf mirror and put it up on your... Uh, oh Lord. You know, you get a full length mirror, put it in your bed, and, and just look at your gun. You be hard to go to sleep. Boy, you somebody. I know. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. You have a mirror everywhere. <laughs> ah! Oh, okay. Uh oh. I'm losing my spine here. But see, death and life in the power of time, what are you saying? When the, when, listen, when the going gets hard, what are you saying? See, you don't, this is not something you just say when everything's going well. Come on now. You can, listen, you, what you do, listen, when the, when the storms of life hitting you, you wipe your face off and wipe your mouth off and you, and you say what you want. You say what the end result is. You say your destination. You say it shall be even if God said it shall be. I don't care, you've been divorced five times, so what? What's that got to do with anything? That's just five times you don't you didn't know what you were doing. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. You just you fill in the blanks on that one. But I tell you what, my destiny is not determined by what I've done. My destiny is determined in what I'm saying and where I'm going. I'm setting this course. See, this is this is a path, y'all. This is a path. And so I want you, you know, I, I told God, I said, no, I ain't preaching for no other result other than to, to educate people. I think the more people I can educate on the word of God, I can impact whole societies of families. This is a big one. And see, this is why I don't watch a whole lot of television, especially, you know, stuff, because they give you opinions. And if you're not careful, you'll start embracing those opinions, and now they're coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. No, you determine. You determine. See, you determine. You determine how far you go. You determine that. I told you. Okay, I'm going to bring it up. I, I was having an issue with... Um, you know, people, people always say, well, you know, where was God when that young man went in that school and shooting people and, and, and where's God? And this, there's a guy in L.A. now, a former cop, he's getting, he's on a rampage killing people because he got fired and all that. And then people always say, well, where is God? And, and here's the thing, man. <laughs> See, people, we're evil. We live in a Evil world. That's right. That's right. Evil world. And and it's getting more evil all the time. And people, 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 I think sometimes people start with a thought. And maybe they were told, you weren't about to anything. And the devil, he keep pounding these thoughts, pounding. Nobody, no one woke up one day and said, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and kill about 20 people. That doesn't happen like that. It starts with words, and then it turns into thought, and then it turns into belief system, and then there's a convincing that goes on. Now, I'm, I'm way ahead of myself because I, I want to even show you that process. But i tell you one thing. God, God is right where he's always been. Yeah. But the point is, people choose to do that. Well, God allowed it. Of course he did. He allowed anything that you will allow. Amen. I don't want to jump in there yet. But here's my point. This is why we need to get people born again. Amen. Because Amen. when they get born again, their thinking will change. And get them in this word, their thinking will change. 
Their thinking will change. I love, I love to. I cannot take another life. You know? See, murder and killing is two different things. Yes. People get killed for breaking in your house while you're sleeping. <laughs> and messing with your wife. They get killed. <laughs> is that wrong? <laughs> yeah. You trying to rape my daughter, those people get killed. Yeah, that's, that's the difference. That's why you read the Bible. You know, anyway. But yeah. Proverbs 18. Oh, shoot. Go to Psalm. I thought we went there. Didn't we go to Psalm? We was in Psalm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, stay right where you at. No, no. Go to Psalm. Back. Back to Psalm 141. And hurry up. <laughs> no, because I want to. I got to get to this one place. So death and life is where? So we can cause death or we can cause life with our words. Oh, okay. Let me read this to you. Death is anything that separates us from the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Everything. And see, and it's not just a matter of being alive and not alive. It's a matter of the quality of life. See, I can, I can create an environment in my home. We still living together, still drive, come to church and smile. But the quality of our life and the quality of our relationship is the pits. And we can create that with our words. James said it this way. He said in James 3, he said, out of the same mouth comes what? Blessing, Blessing and cursing. He said, it ought not be so. He said, out of your mouth come blessing and cursing. So I can bless or I can curse. He didn't say, out of the devil's mouth come blessing and cursing. Out of my mouth. What are you saying? See, we need to, we need to examine. Like I said, I know you, you've heard this before, but this is something you got to stay on top of. Show you right. You got to stay on top of it because depending on what you're going through, if, you're not, if you haven't spent time with it, where well, this thing has gotten down in your spirit spirit to where it's like this is what I do you know I would tell them you know we've been doing this so long it's hard for me to even use examples of not because I can't even pick my mouth to say stuff like I can't or I, I hate I don't even like you use that word I hate I don't hate nobody but the devil Amen. I don't even use the word oh I just love this car I don't love that car right. I enjoy that car I don't love nothing because if I love it, I mean, I can't get rid of it. And if God telling me to move it, I can't move it. I don't love the car. I love her. I love God. Amen. I enjoy everything else. But examine what you're saying. See, your whole career can be on hold. You can sabotage your own self by the words of your mouth, even your internal dialogue. What are you saying? What are you hearing? What are you hearing about you? Somebody says something. Okay, see, I don't care what they say about me. What, I, what matters is what I say about me. Now, if I don't know how to counter what someone said, I will embrace their opinion, bring it into my heart, incubate it, and next thing I know, I'm thinking about me like they are. I remember they used to tell me I was slow. You know what slow means? You didn't learn properly. Yeah, and I had to go to these classes. And, you know, I went to these classes. Then I realized, they said I'm a dummy. Yeah, and, and you know, I went to those classes. And, and I guess I was because my, my, my score was reflecting, you know, some lack of ability. It was. That's what the score said. But then I got saved. I'm serious, man. And I got saved. And the first thing I found out, one of nine, one of the first thing I found out, I found out about... Life and death and the power of the tongue. So I start speaking to my reasoning and calculating and thinking faculties. And I start laying hands on my own self. What you say? Because the Bible says, whatever my hand touch shall what? Prosper. So I said, mine, in the name of Jesus, you will calculate, understand, you will, you will get it the first time. And then I got the mind of Christ that Jesus wasn't no dummy. He was in the temple at a young age, astounding people. So I said, I got that. I got it. 
And every day, I'll never forget it. Uh, when I was trying to study, trying to make staff sergeant and, and it's in the military. And I had to go to the class. I would have to study nine hours, man. I mean, hours. I was always diligent. But I'm like, okay, this is, I got other stuff to do. All of a sudden, and I would read, uh, I think it's Daniel 3, where it said God gave him skill and our learning, wisdom, and understanding. And before I would study, every day before I start, I said, okay, I'm only going to study an hour and a half. Every day. I'm going to be consistent. I want to have every day because I still got to go minister. I was doing prison ministry. So I didn't want to be studying all night. And, and every day before I studied, I would sit there and say, Father, I thank you for giving me skill. Skill in all learning, wisdom, and understanding. So I, for me to score what I need to score to get promoted. From that time, we were the Carswell Air Force Base. That's when it kicked in. We were Carswell Air Force Base, Fort Worth, Texas. And I, don't, I can't tell you exactly when. I didn't feel nothing. I didn't feel smarter. But all of a sudden, I was retaining stuff like one time, pow. One time, pow. And, 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 and the rest is history. I could read something now. I don't need to sit there and read it 15 times. I mean, it, it was amazing. It, it's amazing. What happened? I start speaking life to me. I have skill in all learning, wisdom, and understanding. I can do anything I want to do. Amen. And, and, and it's not happening. So I, I'm saying that to say, see, a lot of times we don't rise above status quo or, or supposed limitation because we don't speak to them. Now let me take you somewhere else. Are you there? No, you're not there. I didn't tell you to go there. <laughs> go to Psalm 141. I, I really want to just take my time and, and I want you to get this. So bad, so bad, so bad, and I'm fired up teaching again. I'm, I do this every day, y'all. I'm not trying to brag on me. I'm just telling you, every day. How often? Every day. Every day. Every day. That's why I feel so good about me. I pump me up before I get out here. I feel good. Now I'm not saying oh, I don't always physically feel like I'm on top, but I talk like it. You ever see a, a woman, oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> I heard this years ago, it's true, but I, I, I don't think it fit right here. <laughs> I, I, actually, it could, but I, I'm not, I got a little check there. Like, hold your horse, brother, hold your horse. You know, I do listen sometimes. Man, I just feel like I'm one. Um, not that, but... I'm so, I'm so, I'm so bought in. I'm so in. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so gung ho. This. I wish I could preach this every Sunday. Yeah. Wherever you are in your life, you can turn some things around. In fact, don't turn it. But in James three, it talks about your tongue is like a rudder on a ship, mm -hmm. and a bit in a horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. I was telling this morning. One time we were we were on a cruise and. I never cruise again in October, um, August, or September because hurricanes chased us all over the Caribbean. It just chased us all around. There. And so we were supposed to go to this, I, I said Cayman Island, it's a real nice place, but we ended up having to go to Haiti. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't signed up, paid no money <laughs> to go to Haiti. And so, we said, well, you know, the hurricane coming. And so, and so they said, okay, we're going to have to redirect the ship. And so, anyway, and so, so they had to, this old, big old ocean liner, uh, uh, cruise boat. And they said, okay, we're going to redirect and go to Haiti to, to Lebedee, I think. Lebedee, is that how you say it? Anybody? Okay, anyway, they got a little island. It's not like Port-au-Prince, but it's right on the other side of Port-au-Prince. And so they're going to turn the ship around. Totally opposite direction. Now, they did not take the ship. The captain didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> and we were going like that. He didn't do that. He said, okay, we're going to turn the ship around. And I'm like, okay, how are we going to do this? And I never felt the ship turning. It took us half a day to turn the ship around, to go in the opposite direction. Now, the Bible says your tongue is like a rudder. 
you can change the direction of your life anytime you want to. What you have to do is put pressure on your tongue to say only what you need to say to go where you need to go. If you are going that way, you need to put pressure on your tongue to only talk that way. I know it doesn't look like it, doesn't feel like anything changing, but I'm telling you, God is up to something as long as you're saying it, it changes. Yes. And you can take, I don't care what situation, I can tell you thousands of stories. But it takes time, but you're going to have to be disciplined enough to keep your tongue, put pressure on it, and not say anything other than where you're going. And you go to sleep, and while you sleep, thank you, put it in your spirit, let your subconscious work on it. Because see, when that shit we didn't, I didn't know, all I know is, next thing I know, the next day we was in Haiti. On, I couldn't feel it, I couldn't see it, but the captain said, we're going that way, and so we're turning the ship. You are the captain of the ship. Somebody in your house needs to make an announcement and say, baby, from the this day, for, you need to make an announcement. 2013 is the year that we go this way and we'll never look back again. This is going to be unprecedented year in my life. And you put pressure on it until you get there. And you keep on saying it. I don't care what other people say. You keep on saying it. You keep on saying it. Oh. Oh. David understood that. And he said, no. See, you, your pressure keeps you off of the paths of the destroyer. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I always get so worked up when I come talk to y'all the second service. I was nice and cool first service. Didn't even sweat. Didn't even sweat. Okay, you Psalm 141? Yes. Okay. I guess the more I hear it, the more. Hallelujah. Okay, now David also understood the, he, 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 he knew the power of words. Look at verse 3. He said, God set a guard, O Lord, over my over my what? No. Wow. Keep watch over the door of my lips. <laughs> he called his mouth a door. He called his lips a door. So that means the words of our lips can let things into our lives or get things out of our lives. He said, <laughs> <laughs> now, now David could ask God to do that under the Old Testament because David didn't have the Holy Ghost. See, we have the helper. And when I desire, okay, Lord, you know what? I, I, can you help me get my mouth saved? He said, sure. And then I do this all the time. Holy Spirit, arrest me. Arrest me, bust me out, whatever. Arrest me when my mouth is out of order. And then, of course, I got my wife, too. She, she's a good helper now. Yeah. So, so, under the new covenant, I'm responsible for the, for the, <laughs> this door. <coughs> now, I would get an accountability partner and say, look, uh, uh, Rochelle, when you hear me just acting a fool, will you just go ahead and slap me five times? <laughs> well, she, you know, her, okay, not slap, that's violent. <laughs> My bad. Okay, go to Psalm 39 real quick. Hurry up. Glory to God. I know this is not new, but you know, we don't need anything new. We need to master what we know. How many of y'all, this is kind of bringing back some like, yeah, I know this, man, but golly, I haven't heard this in a while. Yeah, turn that ship around. I said, turn that ship around. Glory to Jesus. Every day, every day, call your wife a virtuous woman. Sometimes your mind will tell you, she ain't none of that. I said, I didn't say she would, just say it. <laughs> Sometimes you'll feel like you're lying. <laughs> but you know that ship turning. <laughs> it's turning. Hey, you in Psalm 39? Yes, sir. Okay, look at verse 1. He says, I will guard my ways lest I sin with my tongue. Mm. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. 
David understood, man, I got to keep my mouth shut. But wicked here means demons. See, demons are waiting for the words of your mouth. Yes. Because they can't just arbitrarily do anything because death and life are in the power of what? Your tongue. The tongue. So demons are perched, waiting. You know, so you, especially if you get in the heated conversation, especially if you feel, feel the heat coming on, demons are like, they put their bandanas on. <laughs> Put their goggles on like we get ready to get busy up in this piece right here. And they'll get right on your shoulder. They'll get on your shoulder. And they'll, they'll start formulating thoughts and words. They'll start bringing up stuff that happened six months ago. They'll start getting loading up on ammunition to say, to try to put you down and make you feel like you're two cents. And, and what they'll do, they'll paint a picture so vivid to get you to release something that will Kill whatever you're trying to bring in your life. And they sit there because they know, they know, listen, we got to get them to say that because if we don't, if they don't say it, we, we have nothing to work with. That's right. And so every time you're getting striped in the vision, they're like, because <laughs> I told the first crowd, see, there's not enough demons to cover all of us. You don't have a personal demon. Don't even think like that. You got a personal angel, but you don't have a personal demon. Demons don't, don't, don't recreate. So this, whatever demons were back there with Moses and them, they old, and then Mona one's still around. <laughs> demons don't recreate. But guess how many people are born again now? It's a lot more. They can't cover all of us. So that's why he said, if I can get Calvin to just run off at the mouth, he sets in the motion the consequences of what he said. Because those words are, are going out and doing something. So, so I can get him, get him going, <laughs> and then I can leave him alone and go on over there and get Gardner. And work on him for a while. I get him going, and I go over here and work on Miles. You see, they all self-check now. And now they just perpetuate, talking more, talking more, talking more. Speaking depth, more depth, more depth. And then let me go, I can go over and get friends. I got to work on him. That's the way it works. So David said, let me, God help Put a muzzle on this thing. I may be thinking it, but I ain't gonna say it. Because if I say it, I just license a demon to come into my life and wreak havoc on me and my. That's why in your house, don't you ever have a one, an argument with your wife and then leave the house, just run off somewhere. You just left her there. Because that demon, because the demon understands if he had a choice between staying with you and staying with her, he gonna stay with her. Because she talk more. Because <laughs> she going to wait till you get back and go to sleep on the couch. You downstairs. You, you know you can't go upstairs. She going to go And you said this too. Why did you say this? What did you mean by that? And he like, golly, what we talking about? Because he know you going to, he know, the, not y'all, but the average woman going to keep it going. I better get out of here now. Or didn't it say, didn't it say, didn't the Bible say, y'all want to get scripture on you? want me to get scripture on you? I can get scripture on you. In case you're mad at me. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. But no. 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 <laughs> you know how they do. See, we're, we're like file cabinet. We just, we just file it and we move on. They're like these high pollutant computers. They can pull it up at random. <laughs> they just pull it up at random. Vivid, high definition, YouTube. You said this, it was partly cloudy. It was, you had a red shirt on. You had a red shirt when you said it too. Yeah, we was about to go to Chili's when you said that. Huh? Go to Matthew chapter 16 quick and then I'm out of, we out of here. I'm sorry. Are you getting this? They're, they're perched, man. They're whispering words. And see, they're whispering words of death and destruction on your shoulder. Say this to him. Say this to him. They're whispering. They say this to him. You know he didn't. You, you know you already said if he do this one more time, if he do it one more time, he did it. He did it. Say this to him. You know you said you're gonna leave it if, if he just do this one more time. He did it. Look, why don't you say something? Say something. Go call his commander on and call his commander. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. I know some of y'all like look at me like, ooh, boy, that's a hit right now, man. 
Yeah. <laughs> and he tell kids, you kid, you kid, see, you, you kid, what you got to understand is you cannot, see, the devil after y'all, man. I was, I'm going to do a whole sermon just on, on the kids. Wow. He's after y'all because the greatest thing that can destroy your life is disrespecting your parents. Amen. Yeah. And some of y'all are so smart. Y'all been getting away with stuff so long. Your parents, you know, because your parents can't figure it out. <laughs> they so busy worrying about how they're going to pay the rent. And, and, and insurance payment, they ain't got time to be thinking, because all you got to do is smile at them and do something without asking, and they think, oh, praise God, my baby's fine. And they, <laughs> and y'all so bright, and y'all can make it look like it's all good, but the devil is after you bright key especially. And he's after the one, he's after, because he understands, I can destroy your life if I can get you to sever your, your connection with your parents. Say it. If I can paint them and cause them to be the enemy instead of your covering, I can destroy your life and then bring in somebody to just talk to you just right and say all the right things you've been wanting to hear all your life. I know that's how it works. I know that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the thing that cuts you off more than anything, not, when I say cuts you off, the thing that, 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 that brings a cycle, a Go to death in your life more than anything else. It's disrespecting your, your, your parents. He whispered to you. They don't care about you. Look, they spent all that time down at church. Is it okay if I keep it real? Can I get real real? For a minute. What'd you say, Victoria? Was that you? Okay, pray God. I got my, my amen corner over there. Uh, I need to get real with this scripture. Verse, uh, Matthew 16. Because I'm, I'm out of time. Glory to God. I'm so <laughs> loving this. Ooh. Now, I made a statement a minute ago, and I'm going to back it up with this scripture. I said, God will allow what you allow. Verse 18, Matthew 16, 18. I also say to you, this was after Peter had a revelation of who Jesus was. He said, and this rock I will build, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so that's a, a you know, good translation, but that doesn't, give clarity I believe to what Jesus is saying and, and my study and research lets me know that the amplified version really really tells it like it is so um, let's look at that verse 19 in the amplified and I want you to get a hold of this real quick uh, I gotta speed up he said I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind that is declare say declare, declare. what does declare mean to speak, to announce, to decree, to get ugly with it and say it not here. Um, declare to be improper or unlawful on earth or in your house, in your marriage, in your family, in your business. Must be what is already. If I say already. already. It must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever you lose. Or that is declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. Now, who got the keys? You. Who's going to declare and bind and loose? God is not going to do that. Jesus said, I, all authority has been given unto me. And he delegated that authority to us to carry out what he would do or what he did when he was on the earth. So, while I'm waiting on the Lord to fix it, you're going to be waiting a long time. Because he said, I gave you the authority to go ahead and take care of this now. So, if you don't like it, you do something about it. Now, if you, if you will allow the situation, I have to allow it. 
That's where I got that from. He said, whatever you declare unlawful on, on, on earth must already be what is unlawful. I've already declared it unlawful up here. We don't have any of that up here. Just look up here. If we have it up here, you can have it down there. You follow me? Yeah. So he says, listen, there's no, there's no, there's no, no disease. There's no depression. There's no oppression. There's no lack up here. We don't do that up here. So where you have lack and depression and oppression, where you have dysfunctional family, listen, everybody gets along up here. We go up each other's mansions and stuff. We have cookouts up here. <laughs> See, we're all happy up here. Nobody's lacking anything. So, if you see that down there, that is not consistent. Didn't Jesus say, I want my will to be done on earth as it is in heaven? He's not going to do it. He did it part. He said, I gave you authority. So, if it's not right. I remember, man. He said, so, 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 if this situation it does not mirror what's up here, you stand there and you start declaring in the name of Jesus, you are not wanted here. You are unlawful, and I refuse to be denied of what's that up there. So what's up there now comes and replaces what's here. Glory. You listening to me? You tell stuff, you tell that dysfunctional thing. You are not the will of God right here. I declare and decree harmony in my family. We love one another with the love of Christ. We support one another. We, we have cookouts. <laughs> Sickness. Uh uh. Jesus took my infirmity. You remember that cross? When he was on that cross, all of this that's in my body, it shot into him. So in heaven now, there's no more sickness. So I declare and decree, this is unlawful in my body. I'm sorry, y'all. I just got, y'all just got to let me go right now. Because I've done this. I've done. Man. See, if you will allow it, God will stand back and let you allow it. But if you would declare it, all of heaven will back you up. All of heaven will back you up. All of heaven. And there's nobody that can stop you. No man can stop you. You don't even have to be smart to do this. You just got to know your covenant and be consistent. Still in my kid. You can't. Uh -uh. No, you not. That is not the will of God been without a job this long. That's not the will of God. I'm supposed to be working and eating. Amen. Not the will of God. Listen, my, we talking about sowing seed. Listen, he said he will have a I, I will have a harvest on my seed. Listen, this seed, this process ain't complete till I got a return on this thing. I was telling a man, I found a script the other day. Just, 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 well, yesterday. And I emailed it to her. I said, baby, this is what I'm standing on right here. I got it. I got it. Now, I've been reading the Bible a long time, and I know that scripture's in there, but God said, take this one. So I emailed her. She was downstairs. I emailed her to her. <laughs> I know. Ain't that something? I didn't feel like getting up. So, <laughs> no, I was in the moment. I was in the moment. And I emailed her. I said, baby, this is, I'm telling you, this is the way we do it, y'all. I, mean, I mean, we got all kinds of stuff going on right now, but it's all good. It's good. But see, I'm focused and fixed, and my mouth is moving. I ain't got time to be gossiping about nobody. I don't care. Y'all do what you got to do. I got, I got work to do. I'm working on something, and I'm going to use my words. I only got about 75000 a day. I'm going to use my words to my advantage. I have a list of stuff. I got it in my iPad, on my iPhone, on my wall at home. I got a list of stuff that I say every single day. That's how I got rid of sleep apnea, high blood pressure, uh, 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 all the other stuff. All of them. Cholesterol. I mean, I ain't get rid of cholesterol. High cholesterol. Got rid of all of that. All of them. Man, God, God, this is how God, God brought money in when nobody else was making money. God. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches shall be in my heart. Won cases that nobody thought we could win. Why? God is my righteous judge. I will not fear what man do. No fear here. Absolutely no fear. Listen, I'm going to let you go now. But don't you be afraid to do this. Get you a spiritual regimen. You don't have to do, do, do it like I do it. But do it in a way. Find a way to make it work. But find 
Find the seed. Maybe I'll preach on that next week. Find the seed of the word and get it in you. Because that's the part of the, I'll te- I'm, I'm going to teach you this week, I already told you. And, and get it in you to when you say it, it comes out like the line of the tribe of Judah. It's not just word, but there's a force behind it. All right, I'm done. Oh, I did it again, man. I did it again. I preached myself happy. I love my preaching. <laughs> you say, you sound conceited. Well, okay. I love my preaching. That's why I come to this church. No, I'm, I'm just playing. I just, I, I trust it. I, I, I feel like we made a connection today. Now, I want to encourage you. Because I'm going I'm to push you back to the word. But, you know, we, in our bookstore, and maybe next week I'll really get on this. But in our bookstore, we have faith building material. I'm amazed at the people that don't. And I ask people, because sometimes people come, well, Pastor, I'm trying to. And I'll ask them, what's your prayer life like? What's your study life like? Oh, Doc. You know, I said, well, you ain't ready for this then. Just do it out because you're not ready. But God's way. Now, if you can find another way, go ahead and do it that way. But God's way requires you planting the seed of his word and then letting God talk to you about that word on how you execute. So I want to encourage you. We have a lot of stuff. Done. I have a lot of take. I, I think I'm going to put everything on in the book on sale half price. I don't know what day I'm going to do it. And, and entice you to go in there and get stuff and then study. And study, not just have it, but study. I don't need to buy any more books. I got books. I got books ten years I had not read yet. But but that's okay. I know I'm gonna get to them. But 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 study to show yourself approved. Not read. Study. Whatever you you know, whatever crap you're doing, God can get all in that. You study to be a better teacher and better study to be a better believer. All right. Thank y'all so much for coming. It's my pleasure and my privilege to share with you the living word of God. Before we go, I just want to give one appeal today, and that would be for people to, to, (laughs) accept Jesus into your life today. Okay? I'm talking about really accepting him in your life. I talked about you can turn your life around with the words of your mouth and, and you can but the number one way, see the way you get saved is confessing and out of your mouth saying Jesus I want you to be Lord of my life. That's how you do it. 